this video will discuss uh, some of the exceptions to the octet rule. We we talked about this earlier that according to the Lewis model, uh, in order for you to represent the molecule, you have uh, each atom in the molecule has to satisfy the octet rule, which means that it has to have eight valence electron, or if it's a hydrogen, it has two electrons, valence electron. And anything that doesn't satisfy the octet rule, and that means that these molecules cannot exist, okay? However, in reality, it turns out that people have discovered molecules that you really can't draw a Lewis structure that satisfy the octet rule. In other words, these molecules turn out to violate the octet rule, but they still exist. So this is what we refer to as exceptions to the octet rule. And what we're going to do in this video is discuss these three major exceptions to the octet rule. So the first one exception is uh, atoms that have fewer than eight electrons in a molecule. An example of this is BH3. If you draw the Lewis structure of BH3, the valence here is three for B, and then you have three for a hydrogen. There's three hydrogens, one each, so then you have six electrons total. If you were to draw this, B has to be the central atom, so then what you get is this structure right here. But once you see here, when you draw this, you're basically complete with the structure because all the six electrons have been used, but clearly in this case, boron actually doesn't have the octet, doesn't satisfy the octet rule in this case. Now, even though BH3 exists, uh, it's really not very stable. We see this experimentally because if you were to have BH3 near something like NH3, for example, which you can also draw the Lewis structure of, what's going to happen is, because there's an excess pair of electron right here, the boron is what we call electron uh, deficient or electron thirsty to some extent, and it needs to make up that octet. So as a result, there will be a reaction between these two guys together, and it will form the following molecule, which is called an adduct. And basically what you'll see is something that looks like this. And this is a fairly common reaction in organic chemistry. And as you can see, once it forms this adduct, the B can claim eight electrons, so it has an octet. And then the N can claim eight electrons and also has an octet. Okay, but what I'm saying is the BH3 molecule does exist, even though it's electron deficient, but it's not very stable. Okay. So to some extent, the Lewis uh, model is correct. However, it's incorrect in the sense that the molecule exists, but it's correct in the sense that it's not very stable. The other example of something that has fewer than eight electron would be BeH2. Uh, uh, in this case, beryllium can be satisfied with only four electrons. So you, you might want to just memorize this exception where beryllium can have four electrons and boron can have uh, six electrons, okay? This is often called, like I just said earlier, electron deficient species, okay? Something to keep in mind in terms of terminology. All right, so the second exception is something we refer to as electron-rich species or expanded octet elements that could have more than eight electrons, okay? So this, both of this refers to the fact that they can have more than eight electrons, okay? An example of this is the following molecule. If you have the molecule XEF4, the way you can draw a Lewis structure that would be correct for this molecule would be the following. You have the valence, it's eight electrons for the noble gas xenon, and then you have four of fluorine, which is uh, four times seven, that's 28 plus eight is 36 electrons. When you draw this Lewis structure, this is your skeletal structure, and remember that because fluorine is a, a second period element, it has to have an octet, and we'll discuss this in a second, has to have an octet, right? So if you put this uh, around fluorine, each fluorine, then you're going to have, you know, uh, each fluorine then has four pairs of electrons around it, so then you get four fluorines, so four times four is 16, which means there's 32 electrons used up already, so you have four electrons left, okay, that you need to place. Now, where are those four electrons going to go? Turns out that they're not going to the fluorine, but they're going to the xenon. Okay, now clearly if you look at this and you count around xenon, now you have 12 electrons, okay? And this clearly violates the octet rule, but this molecule does exist, so we have to make an exception for this. So in other words, something like xenon can actually have 12 electrons around it. Now it turns out that when you look at all the molecules that can have an expanded octet, this is what we refer to as an expanded octet, it has more than eight. It turns out this only happens to molecules 
uh, that contain atoms that are on the third period or beyond. So let's analyze why that is. To do this, we would need to look at each orbital uh, and see how many orbitals you can have for each principal quantum number. If you look at n equals 1, then the only orbital that can exist, of course, is the 1s orbital, and for the 1s orbital, you can only have a maximum of two electrons. Okay, there's no other orbitals that are available. Of course, in the first principal quantum number of first period, we only have two elements, hydrogen and helium. For the second period, it's possible to have 2s, but it's also possible to have your 2p orbital, and you can have three of them, right? So this is your 2p orbital. So in total, if you count the maximum number of electrons you can have in the second period element, they can have a maximum of eight electrons, and that's where the octet rule comes about, okay? Now let's look at the third period. The third period, you can have your 3s, you can also have your 3p, but you can also have your 3d orbitals, right? So if you count the maximum number of electrons that you can have in the third period, that will imply that you just add up all of these, and you can have 18 electrons total. Okay, so this is really the reason why elements on the third period or beyond can violate the octet rule, because they would prefer to have eight electrons, which is basically represented by the 3s and 3p. However, if you have more electrons, the element could accommodate it, because there are available 3d orbitals that are empty, that are allowed for this particular element, because the 3d orbital is relatively close by to the electrons that are right here, okay? So in other words, that's why the third element, uh, the third period or beyond can have elements that can violate the octet rule. So if, of course, if you go up further to 4, the same thing would be applicable here. You can have 4d and 4f, so th those all can accommodate the extra electron, okay? That's the reason why elements in the second period cannot violate the octet rule, so this cannot violate the octet rule, okay? But third or beyond can violate the octet rule in the sense of having more than eight electrons, okay? So that's the second exception. The third exception is basically something we refer to as species that contain odd numbers of electrons. So these are often called free radicals because they turn out to be very, very reactive. However, they do exist on their own. So an example of this is a very important gas, NO, which has 11 valence electron if you count this, right? Because nitrogen is 5 and oxygen is 6, okay? Now, if you have something that has an odd number of electrons, there's no way you can draw a lowest structure for a molecule like this, okay? So, for example, this is one attempt of drawing uh, an O molecule with a lowest structure, but as you can see here, I have only a single electron here, and there's really no way of representing a drawing where both of these atoms, N and O, have octet around their uh, valence shell, okay? So, in other words, for molecules like this, the Lewis model just fails to represent the molecule, okay? represent the atom. So in other words, these three are exceptions that you have to remember. The odd number of electrons, in this case the lowest model just fails, and then you have your electron-rich species, which is the fact that you can have more than eight electrons, and the way the Lewis model explains this is that because you can have um, d orbitals in the third period or beyond, that allows you to accommodate more electrons. And lastly, uh, the other one that the Lewis model can't really explain is the fact that there's some species that can actually have fewer than eight electrons and yet still be stable.